By now, the high pressure was bringing in light winds and hot days, and the holiday felt real for the first time. But we weren't getting in much sailing, with the engine doing the donkey work.
To be honest, I was disappointed with Poole Harbour. It's the second largest natural harbour in the world after Sydney, and I thought there would be sheltered sailing and lots to explore. But when you take a closer look on the chart, there's barely a prattful of water in it being shallow for most of its expanse, and the channels that are there need careful navigation taking into consideration the state of the tide. Needless to say, as soon as we entered the harbour, the weather changed. So we took shelter in Cobbs Key Marina, which was the most expensive marina we stayed in as the town quay was full. We walked to the quay and had a look around and there wasn't much to see. Though I remembered from my teenage years watching Hackney Hawk Speedway making a date on Friday at 8, long since debunked now, that Paul had a Speedway team. So we spent an exciting evening watching Paul Pirates vs the Leicester Lions. Great memories came flooding back recounting the noise, the speed and the smell of the fuel and oil. The following day we got the bus to Bournemouth, though it was far from beach weather. Still, the grey clouds couldn't hide the beauty of one of our loveliest seaside towns. Later that evening when we returned to the boat, we were greeted by the flash and bangs of fireworks. A nice end to a pleasant day. We eventually found a weather window to escape Paul. 
and headed for Lymington. Again, the wind had fallen light and was coming from astern, so the engine was required once again. Apart from a bumpy ride through the overfalls at Hurst Point and avoiding the ferry in the river, it was an undramatic passage. We thought we had dodged the worst of the weather, but as we entered the river, dark clouds appeared and it was soon a dash to find the orders as we motored upstream in a torrential downpour. It seemed the rain was never going to stop. Having left Bewley we headed into Portsmouth. Once again the weather turned foul and we were here for another five days as strong winds and torrential rain kept us ashore. Fortunately there was more to do here than there was in Paul and passes were purchased for the Royal Naval Dockyard which were a good value. On the Sunday the fastnet race started in gale force headwinds. I checked the forecast for the next day as our time stuck in Gosport Marina was starting to get expensive. It showed the winds easing, so we decided to leave and go across the sea view on the Isle of Wight, anchor up for the night and prepare for our journey home. As we left Portsmouth, we were deceived by the shelter the harbour had given us, and there was still 25 to 30 knots of wind in the Solent. Although the crossing was only an hour, it was quite challenging, but having spent probably 80% of the holiday on the engine, I did quite enjoy it, though for my crew, it was a bit of a white knuckle ride. On our way back we were rounding Dungeness when we saw the border force picking up around 20 to 30 refugees. Not your conventional life jackets, but I guess if you're desperate. <laughs> 